Ivan, nice to see you. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, and you? Very well, thank you very much indeed. Are you in, uh, in Geneva at the moment, ready for yes, Christmas? Very much. In sunny Geneva. Sunny Geneva, yeah, you're lucky. Yep. Huh? Yeah. I mean, rainy, rainy London, but uh, yeah, yeah, you can't have everything, can you? Tell me, Ivan, are you you ready ready for Christmas? Or creativity right. never stops, and you're still going even these days before never Christmas. Stop. We'll go. We'll, I'll take some holiday, but uh, uh, it will be working holiday. It's good. I like it. For the few that don't know you yet, uh, Ivan, because I haven't seen many of these videos uh, out there. So I'm very happy and uh, I'm very grateful that you're spending this time with, uh, with us today. And I would like to dig a little bit into Ivan Arpa to then move into Artia, so the brainchild of your own uh, creativity. Um, Ivan Arpa, you're one of the iconic uh, uh, people in the watch industry. We only met, we only met recently, you and I. Uh, but I've been knowing of you and of your work for at least the last 20 years, since the times um, with some of the uh, very well-known uh, uh, watch, watch brands you were involved with. How important is your background in the, um, in the you know, mechanical watchmaking world? No, listen, um, uh, from a cosmic point of view, nothing. But from a watchmaking point of view, yeah, it's just the age. It's the mileage. Nothing else than... Uh, age and mileage, and uh, I've been lucky enough to work maybe for uh, 12 or 15 uh, main big watch brand. Some, uh, it was official, some other, it was only from a design point of view. So uh, with NDA, I could not tell that I was the one uh, making some watches. And uh, I learned a lot and I respect a lot all my, uh, all my colleagues from the industry. And it's a fabulous industry I, I love. Yes, yes, true. Yeah. Have you been... Uh... I remember famously your involvement with the Roman Jerome when you yeah. launched, of course, the Titanic, Titanic watch that put Roman Jerome on the map, if you like. And that was a, a very breaking boundaries kind of project. That was a, bit, a little bit the symbol of how creative you need to be and how much of bound, you know, how many boundaries you need to break when you create. Yeah, maybe uh, what is interesting is, is more than like, uh, some people think creativity is like uh, taking mushrooms and making stuff. It's uh, the way I do it is more like mathematics. I used to be a teacher in mathematics and that's my, my field. And uh, when uh, we took over Romain Jérôme, uh, which was a, a non-brand, uh, we had not much time to make it famous. So my idea was to take like, like in mathematics, hypothesis of work to find a material that has a huge and uh, knowledge that everybody knows about, like awareness, and that was, and also a controversial material. So people would, would speak and people would be shocked, but when you have emotions, then you're on the right way because watches are supposed to give emotions. So uh, when uh, I took a, a couple of different hypotheses and one of the material I wanted to work with was the rust, because the rust is the enemy of the watchmaking and to make it more noble than gold was interesting from a conceptual point of view and to take a material that has a huge awareness, which was a part of the Titanic, was also interesting. So to, to make this all together and sell watches with this uh, concept was, was very strong. Yeah, we, we did very well, yeah. That's the first hint uh, into the uh, creative, creative mind of Ivan Arpa. Uh, as I was saying, big, big past in the watch industry, Hublot, Roman Jerome. You were responsible for the design of the S3, um, S3 gear by, uh, by, by Samsung as well, which was something that must have given you an out of the box pressure in terms of creativity uh, as well. And as you said now, many other brands you have uh, collaborated with. Um, you famously declared, uh, Ivan, that you are into creativity and innovation but innovation must be meaningful. Is that, is that your... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe just to come back on yeah, the history, it's, it's funny because uh, as I told you, I worked for maybe 15 watch brands. And uh, okay, the one I was officially a CEO or design, uh, I can tell. But the other one I was, uh, I couldn't tell. And the two that allowed me to speak about were two non-Swiss brands. One is Samsung with the Gear S3, and the other one was Jacob & Co, who were the one who, and they are not Swiss. Uh, now Jacob is Swiss, but I mean uh, that, uh, so it's, it's funny from a conceptual point of view. And yes, innovation must, 
have a meaning. For me, um, watchmaking is, is my world. I love it. It's really powerful. It's strong. It's full of emotion. But we need to be careful. If we do the same thing over and over again, I love, for example, I love, I love uh, Vacheron Constantin. But if I want to make the same than them, I'm 450 years late. So as a new brand, new brand in 20 years, I need to find new ways, new paths. If you remember the hat industry, I was telling uh, like two generations ago, everybody, everybody from Bombay to New York, to Paris, to Geneva was getting in the street with a hat. That was compulsory, otherwise you felt naked. Today, only original wear hats. So we, my, my, my idea is to say, okay, we need to find new ways, new paths that attract young generation. Some of this young generation don't want to wear the same watch than their grandfather. So we need to find new ways. And this is a little bit my work, my, my, my credo, how to, how to go on this, yeah. And in the different ways, once the inspiration comes, you, um, you utilize materials and mechanical engineering in the, same, in the same way, with the same importance, right? Very much so, yeah, yeah. We need to respect the history of watchmaking, which is very, very, very strong. I mean, if you want to have the respect of the collector, you need to respect what has been done so far, and it's fabulous. Really, it's fabulous what the watch history has brought to and into our wrist. So this, for sure. Then my work is more to go a little bit differently, to think a little bit differently from a material point of view, or also from an engineering with a movement point of view. And uh, yes, that's, that's about it, yeah. yeah. I have a couple of watch I can show you there, if you want. Yeah, yeah. When, you came to, uh, when you came to London, it was really interesting, interested, uh, interesting, sorry, and uh, uh, many collectors were really outstanding to see materials such as butterfly wings, or such as nanotubes, yeah. nanotubes sapphire, or, uh, you know, m many other things that we have seen. Uh, how much do mm -hmm. you think is not being done in watchmaking then? Do you find infinite source of inspiration? So much, so much. Huge. All my drawers are full of ideas, and we are many out there with many ideas. I think, uh, yeah, it's an industry. It's a never-ending industry, as long as we can give credibility by respecting the past and innovation. So you name it. There's so many things that can be done and that have to be done, which is uh, fantastic. That's, that's what it's all about. What sure. is, what are, do you want to mention a couple of materials you're in love with at the moment and you find you find really also, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love this very technological material that changed colors with the, with the, with the light so this work has been done in the beginning with, with steel and lightning process my steel was was deformed by lightning process so i work i kept working with the light and then it's the different cabin of lights that makes that some sapphire will change color dramatically when they change the the ray of the lights uh, all this work also my last diver watch was also a reflection a, thinking about the light, because when you dive, light is less, so the dials change colors, so you know at what depth you dive. I mean, light is, 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 is one of the biggest force of the universe, so to work uh, with what light is giving you is something uh, fabulous. And this is something maybe interesting. Uh, all of my watches have a kind of uh, philosophy that is attached to it. And in fact, uh, it's a story, it's a, kind, it's a slice of uh, art at your wrist, but art mechanical art, but also conceptual art and philosophy. Many uh, can be emotional, very, very strong. And you may love it or you may hate it, but it's okay for me. It's okay because it brings emotion. As, as long as you're in an emotional world, that's the one that watchmaking should be all about. I always make an example, uh, and uh, this could be a prelude to my next question uh, of, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm passionate, just uh, I'm not an expert, but I'm passionate about art and especially abstract and, uh, and contemporary art. And I always see, you know, for example, when the, uh, uh, the revolutionary painters of the last century, such as Picasso or Salvador Dali, they started to flip shapes. They started to completely change the codes. Uh, they, were, they were not looking for approval. They were not looking yeah. for, you know, being understood. They were looking for that same drive that probably you are, uh, you are looking for. So do you see in the, in the word Atya, if you haven't already explained it uh, enough, uh, what, what do you see? What is the word Atya and what do you want to trans transmit with, uh, with, with that? Oh, thank you for this question. Thank you for comparing me to with those uh, fabulous masters, but uh, that's too much. But uh, 
Arte is just art by Ivan Arpa. So that's Arte. So uh, I have some ego, but not too much. So I don't want to put my name on the dial, but a little bit of it is okay. So that's, that's the idea. And the, the sound was really good. And really, so that's, uh, that's why I, I, I give this name to the brand. Yes. Yeah. So we have a, you we have a, have a yes, sorry. Watch which were eating my brain. So I could not really, really sleep until I, I finished to make them. And uh, my, my thought was not about uh, pleasing a customer. It was more about finishing a concept which was in my head and, uh, and uh, bringing it to, 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 to birth. So it's, it's true. It's something interesting. Uh, at one stage, I had a forbidden collection, which was conceptual ID, which were a little bit too much different than the mainstream of the watchmaking. It was too much. So I didn't show them to most of... Uh, my collector or my, my, my public. And uh, yes, yeah, some uh, really wanted it. Uh, it was sold out because some of my customers, they were mad that they could not see some of my watches. <laughs> yeah. and there's a, so there's a comment from a, a fellow watchmaker as well from Sweden, GOS watches and uh, uh, Patrick saying the colors on the diver's watch, obviously referring to the depth gauge, which was a finalist in the latest uh, GPAG, the Grand Prix de Logerie in Geneva. Uh, Patrick is saying the color is just pure brilliance. Uh, so it's a simple idea, but executed in a, in a great in a great way. Yeah. Thank is, you. Uh, because I I recognize the ability, Ivan, in what you do to marry auto lingerie, so high end mechanical watchmaking, but also bring very cool ideas in the entry level um, fine watchmaking. So. To be beautiful, True. to be amazing, it doesn't have to be top of the range. Uh, the power of ideas is the same across the line. A very good point. In fact, um, yeah, uh, I'm auto finance. It's uh, my own brand. I started with no money. So, uh, but what I wanted from the start is that the, the, the brand is, 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 uh, is large. Uh, sometimes you do, you do your mono brand, like I have another brand called Black Belt. So, my concept is really, you can only buy the watch if you are black belt. If you're not, you cannot. So it's really mono concept. It's very difficult to get out and to, to this one I wanted to be very broad. So it started at 4,000 with unique pieces all the way to a million or 500,000 at least uh, now in stock. And uh, this is something what, that I wanted because I, as you said, I think you can go into mechanical wonders, but also in simple ID declined for everybody. New ideas, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You, that's, the one, that's the one you were speaking about. Yeah, this is, uh, okay, it's in Sapphire. But I was you see going the to ask, yeah. yeah. Thank you, yeah. Patrick. Uh, thank you, Patrick, for your comment. So this is a, a different version of the depth gauge. And yeah, if you want, you can, right. you can keep showing it. And it's on a Sapphire case in this case, uh, which, is, uh, which is a unique piece as well, uh, Ivan? Uh, I don't think so. No, 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 okay. no. This one is a limited edition, yeah. yeah. It will be a limited edition. Okay, okay, that's perfect. And for those that don't, and you know, haven't seen this watch again, it was a finalist at the GPAG, and actually the way it works as a diver, as you uh, as you dive uh, deeper in the in the water, the dial of the watch will actually change the color, or better, some of the colors will disappear, uh, yeah. Ivan. And it's not yeah. it's not technology, but it's actually a, an illusion, isn't it? Do you want to explain it better? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's very simple. In fact, it's a law of uh, divers. Uh, we all know this when we dive, we have to learn it. The color disappears with depth. So the first color to disappear is the red. So uh, I, when you deep at five meters, the first line, which you see here, the red, will totally disappear. You will not see it in a, again uh, in, on the dial. Then it's the orange, then it's the yellow, and so on. So you know what depth you are on, but just by looking at your dial and see what color are still present. And this is, yes, uh, it's just a law of, uh, of uh, lightning, of, of the light uh, in the water. Huh? Uh, the, yeah. the case is a sapphire, sapphire case. That's about 100 hours to make the case and 70 hours to polish the case. And uh, we have a nice uh, a, a, a movement. Nice see-through at the back. Yeah. Did you, yeah. did you happen to have the idea whilst diving or was it like something you no, thought? No, no, this is one of my, my problem in life. It woke me up uh, while sleeping. And when I had this idea, I was sure that uh, it was already used because it's, it's a simple idea. So I was sure that uh, many brands did it and I didn't know about it. And I made my research. I asked the Fédération Horlogère who helped me. And no, it was never done before. So it's, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It's not about being the first, but it's about the idea, which is nice because light is really 
a very very strong f uh, force of the universe and to to be able to 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 play with it is fabulous absolutely and uh, one of the things that uh, we find quite a lot in your collection at all levels of prizes are unique pieces um unique pieces are important in the, in the RTR collection is there a reason uh, for that the reason why you have to crystallize one idea on one single piece no, it's also, it, it, it uh, feeds my, my uh, anxiety to create. By doing a lot of uh, unique piece, uh, I can create a lot. I can do a lot of watches. So, uh, yeah, that's my style. And this is my signature. Uh, I, I keep creating, creating. So it's a good way to make many, many unique pieces. But it's true that it uh, uh, will not be easy to follow up because when you go to... to uh, to uh, the, my offices, there are so many projects, so many things. It's uh, yeah, it's quite complicated. But it's like an art, it's an, art, an, an art gallery in a in a way to go back <laughs> to the comparison. True, yeah. 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 So it's, how it's, many? I think... Sorry, yeah. No, no. I was going to ask how many unique references you think you have at the moment. Uh, if for somebody to come to Geneva uh, uh, to come, yeah. Yeah, thousands, but we sell them, so uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. And the thing is, uh, I think that uh, unique piece should not be only very expensive pieces. I think somebody who has uh, 5,000 pounds should be able to have a unique piece and be happy and not have the same watch on his neighbor. And uh, we are all unique persons, so why uh, do we have to have the same watch on our neighbor? Or the, uh, this is something that I think is very important. This is also what I wanted to say. Many brands have to be mono-concept. My brand is not mono concept is multi concept. We have many uh, watch collectors who own more than 10 Arkeas. Some, they have the minute repeater and uh, they buy a diver watch or a chance skeleton watch at a, a couple of thousand just for the daily use and the minute repeater for some other use. So this is good. This is good because I have some collectors who keep asking me what's new? what's new. So they want new, new things and it's good. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you see the future of uh... Uh, mechanical watchmaking more on the um, let's say entry level level you know petit degree kind of prices below 10,000 Swiss francs or do you think auto lingerie will always I be think that uh, make people yeah auto uh, I think uh, uh, nobody knows huh? it's always the same we all think uh, we know something about the future the future is changing so fast that uh, it would be more than uh, would be more than arrogant, arrogant to to tell. I think it is like this. No idea, but it's it's fun to be part of it. Very good. <laughs> there is a question that I prepare for you. Uh, that could be a bit boring for you, Ivan. But I, I would like for the for the understanding of our uh, audience to for you to elaborate on it. You know that uh, of course the art of watchmaking has been uh, has been officially recognized by UNESCO in the yes. area of obviously the Swiss mountains and the French, uh, the French border and also in, incorporating some of the French territory as, uh, as a, a patrimony of humanity for the foreseeable yes. future. So something that for us is quite obvious, watchmaking is a form of art. But can you explain why in your, in your opinion, watchmaking is definitely a form of art and how it translates into what you do? <clears throat> no, but uh, it's, it's, for me, it's quite simple, uh, honestly, uh, you buy a car. Let's compare to one of the industries we all know, uh, especially men. Uh, when you buy a car, uh, if you pay more, it go faster. Uh, you may have more comfort, you may have more uh, range or whatever. But you can really understand easily why you pay more. It's bigger, it's and so. And a watch is, a, is really a small object at your wrist. Some of the watches, the more you pay, the less accurate the time will be because it's so complicated that you cannot secure such perfect time as a quartz watch would do. So already from, if we agree on this, you must understand that the value is not on the objective. Uh, it's not to give time. Uh, even, if it's, it's, even in English, you say watch. Uh, so watch, you have to watch. Even in French, we say montre, uh, so show, uh, it's show. So it's, it's more, uh, uh, really a statue symbol. It's a slice of emotion that you wear at your wrist. But this emotion is not just a, a, a simple emotion. It's a very complex emotion. But because first of all, it touches a very, very sensitive force. It's the time. It measures the time. So what is the time? Time is what is still left to you until you die, maybe. So each time you see that you should be happy and grateful. And uh, this is one part, but the other part is really 
how to monitor this time. So this is all the complexity which is 500 years old of monitoring the time. And for sure, it's art. It's really, uh, and, and uh, you see, it's an art where you need to respect some rules, like, like music writing is also an art. You need to respect some rules to, to make it. And uh, at, the, at the end, it is really something UNESCO understood all this value, all this emotion, all this work, all this savoir-faire, and it's, it's totally normal. For me, it's already very late to recognize. It should have been done a long time ago from the start. 300, 300 years ago, absolutely. You were, you were touching on uh, what one should expect from, uh, from a watch, uh, to wear a watch, to design a watch, to experience a watch. And when you, when you were involved with this um, uh, amazing project with the Samsung Gear S3, uh, who, you know, that yep. you were designed, collaboration with Samsung, you, um, you declare that uh, ultimately watches have to have proportion, offer a tactile experience and symbolize choice. Um, yeah, do you see true. that, uh, you know, on, in digital watches, hybrid watches, as well as in mechanical watches, is it a large uh, concept? So. Yeah, 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 very much so. I think uh, uh, we are too much, now it's too much a fight between people, you know, like uh, yesterday was France, Argentina, so everybody's mad because from Argentina or, or so on. Uh, life should not be like this. It's the same. Huh? You, you can have, a, I have, a, of course, I have a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, smart watches because when I do my rounds, I need to monitor my heart, which is okay. It's also, I have a couple of t-shirts and I have a couple of uh, nice suits. Uh, I think it's not one against the other. We all live together and the, the the, the experience which is given by a watch is, is different, it's just different. But of course, the tactile experience and the, and the emotion uh, are different if you pay more and if you pay less, but it can still be very strong. Is there a, is there a, a model or a, a watch you are particularly proud of when you look back at your uh, creations that you can, you really feel that you have achieved something incredible uh, thinking about this timepiece? No, so I think honestly, uh, to be proud of is something wrong. Uh, we should not, because it's giving food to our ego. And this ego is not a nice force. So I'm happy. I'm happy of what I did. I'm happy because of my quality of life. I'm happy because of the people around me. Uh, are happy or I try to make them happy. But to be proud, I think, is, is just uh, give food to your ego and uh, I'm, I'm not, no more in this type of dynamic. It's good. If people like it, I'm happy for them. And uh, I'm more into this type of work than to, to pretend I did something. You know, I, I like to some time compare a little bit of, uh, of what happened in the cosmos or the universe. Uh, even the whole watchmaking industry is nothing. So just we just need to be a little bit more uh, down to earth and be proud of is maybe too much. Uh, just uh, happy and grateful would be more my style. Grateful that I was given the opportunity to, to do things I love. I really like that. And we are very grateful uh, of your time and the time you spent with us here in, uh, in Mayfair, where Thank I am you. at the moment. Uh, we had a great exchange with some uh, 2025 collectors that joined us on the night. You managed to Hello, take everybody. Them. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. And I was going to ask you in terms of um, uh, how you like the exchange when you meet these people face to face and how much does it give you in terms of the next creative drive that you may find out of that? A lot. A lot. For me, it's very important. I love to 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 share quality time with these people and as long as uh, you 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 are on an emotional uh, understanding of a product or even rational understanding of a product it's fantastic because really it's a, a incredible i met some people incredible people and in fact the people who are attracted uh, with my work by my work are honestly uh, very interesting people because there are people who want to, to yeah, they are, want to know more, want to study more, want to, uh, they don't need to have the same watch than the neighbor to, to belong to the club of, let's not talk about others, but uh, you know what I mean. They, they want to have a watch that corresponds to their personality and their style. And this is really 
the people I love and I like to, to share things with them. And uh, uh, yeah, very much, yeah, you are, it's a good point you mentioned, Pietro. So does, it, uh, does RTR also incorporate ways of creating bespoke timepieces based on the wishes of a, of a, of a collector? Yes and no. Uh, uh, it really depends I was on the... Expect, uh, I was expecting exactly that answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because in fact, uh, it really depends on the relation uh, I have with the collector. Uh, if it's a, it's a good understanding of the relation. Sometimes uh, uh, if uh, the person is arrogant and has money and uh, wants something, it's good, but not for me. Uh, it's more like uh, it's an understanding of our uh, respect of uh, common uh, work. Why not? But it has to be a pleasure which is uh, shared. And uh, today we have so many references, uh, so many possibility in the existing collection that, uh, um, yeah, it, uh, it's not it's not a necessity. I would say it's not a necessity. It's a it's a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> if we, yeah but I think I mean I definitely see Ivan in what you do that the, the the drive and the push really comes from inside yourself. And yes, the exchange. Yeah. The exchange must be the, the goal. I mean, the goal in a way that you, you probably treasure and you appreciate the feedback no. that comes to you. But in terms of your inner creativity, that's the main force that comes out of RTI. And inner creativity cannot be controlled. Yeah, and it's uh, one important point. It's maybe authenticity, you know? Some people will, will uh, make a watch because they need money and they want... Uh, uh, I, I don't want this. Uh, if I make a watch, it's because... It's, it's really meaningful, yeah. So what is, uh, what is next with uh, RTR? Is it impossible to predict or do you have some ideas that you can already share maybe no, in the past? Idea, yeah, idea of too many, yeah, no, we have many things coming up. I think uh, that's going to prepare me a couple of watches, see. So these are all those uh, color, uh, can you see something or not? Not really. So those are yeah. all the yeah. uh, color yeah. sapphire. Uh, so those change color with light, depending on the light. So these are. Yeah, would you like to show us one of the purity tourbillons with the Cham chameleon, chameleon series? Sure. Uh, maybe I'll, yeah, I'll show you this one. You see, this is. Uh, can you see it? So, uh, <coughs> yes. Here, so this is the nanotube sapphire green. technology. Yeah, it's green. yeah uh, my own tourbillon. And here you see. In a of seconds, become brown. Can you see something? Or sorry for the. Yeah. Uh, no. 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 Now. Now I can only see the leather. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. how can we do that? Maybe you can, okay. if you can just lift the watch in front of the camera. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, here it is. So this this here, technology, here. Uh, Ivan, allows you to achieve a color changing um, metal. A metal in this case, material is sapphire. So the sapphire yeah, changes its color depending on the light. Yeah, very much so. So you, I will try to make it more professional. Maybe I need the help from somebody from the team. Uh, can you see it? No, no more. Bastien, you can two seconds. So Khalid, Khalid is asking how much is, the, is it dear? So you mean Khalid, the uh, cham chameleon, chameleon uh, yeah. sapphire purity tourbillon? It's in the little box. So this one is a, is a, a 39, but we have bigger one. Uh, we have a... 44, we have 46, a uh, minute repeat. Can you see what I saw? Not really. Yeah, uh, no, not really. I think it's better if you leave the camera uh, steady and you bring the watches. Yeah, you bring the okay, watches okay. with your hands. Oh, don't know why. Here yes. we go. You mean this yeah. one? Yeah. A little bit higher, a little bit higher. Yes, yes here so it here. is. Here it is. Okay. Yeah. So you Need can to change the light spectrum. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm changing the light spectrum. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. What is the price for the uh, Purity Tourbillon Chameleon? Uh, can you remind us, uh, Ivan? Well, the Purity Tourbillon in Sapphire uh, is uh, 125,000. It's my own tourbillon, double barrel, 4 Hz, 17 millimeters uh, uh, carriage uh, tourbillon cage. And uh, uh, if you take it, for example, uh, without Sapphire like this, it's 99,000. Yeah. Oh, Could good. you bring it close like this? Yeah. Exactly. Sure. Uh, that's the, that's the yeah. chiaroscuro that we have published today. Yes, yes, I took it because uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. but you were. But this one is really magnificent. Yeah, really. You can yeah. see the double barrel. You can see yeah. in the back it's quite impressive. So yeah. it's a double barrel, four air, seventeen millimeters uh, tourbillon cage. Very, very. Uh, 
uh, how do you say, aérien, aerial? Yeah. Would you yeah, say yeah, so? but, yeah, yeah, it's very pure, very pure, and it's uh, the maximum of skeletonization that you can imagine on a flying, it's a yeah. flying tourbillon, and it's a unique yeah, yeah, piece, yeah. no? It's a unique piece yes, in this case. Yes, one in the world like this. 4 Hertz, so this is also a very strong, uh, uh, very reliable uh, tourbillon, yeah, you can see. Uh, yeah, very nice. for those that want to know more, uh, the watch is listed on the limited edition. Uh, just look for yep. Artia on the limited edition.co.uk. You'll find uh, our review of the Chiaroscuro Purity um, uh, tourbillon, uh, which is indeed one of the pieces that uh, really caught my imagination um, uh, as well. Yeah, we have. Uh, Oh, I think we lost this. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, so yeah, that's which, that which version is that? It's also a tourbillon, uh, but this one yeah. is with fiber carbon on the side. Yeah. See, yeah. and uh, also a unique piece, only one. And it's steel case. Yeah, in a steel case. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. So the, cool. the tourbillon movement is your own? Yes, yes, totally, yeah. And it's a... Uh, yeah, the good thing is, uh, see, the, 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 the cage is 17.2 millimeters. So when you take it in a, in a smaller case, like I showed you before, it takes more than 40% of the diameter of the cage, of, of the full case. Yeah, huh? yeah. I love it. So it's quite, I absolutely it's love great. it. I find it's yeah. one of the, the best executed skeleton, uh, skeleton tourbillons out there for sure. Yeah, Kara, yeah, pretty much so. Kara Zayev is asking Ivan, do you make your own movement or you outsource them? I think the answer is a bit of a mix. Huh? Yeah, the fact is, uh, if you want to have a unique piece at, at 4,000 Swiss francs, knowing that uh, uh, just to make a case uh, uh, in Switzerland, it costs a little fortune, but uh, uh, I have to buy a movement. So I, I buy from La Jupere, I buy from the various ones at 4,000. But as long uh, as soon as we go higher in prices, it's all my own movement, 100%. Your own yeah. movement, yeah. your own movement. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. yeah see better also the yeah. finishing is quite amazing i don't know if you can see but it's all hand finished all yeah, the angles and so shiny. you cannot see very well yeah, with a polish uh, fully yeah. polished case yeah yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. so is that would you say the purity tourbillon is is probably your um uh, flagship collection at, at the moment i know that you also yeah. make yeah. Mini oh, repeater. Mini repeater oh yeah we we sold many and uh, the sound is very very pure very strong uh, mini repeater tourbillon uh, you see, it's also a fabulous uh, watch. The sound is very, very, very nice uh, in a glass box style of case. Yeah. Very strong sound. I think uh, you register it uh, when uh, I came to see you. This is also one of the very nice watch. Yeah. Uh, Khalid, I, I answered your question. So the RTR, as we were saying, the RTR collection is very wide. So it goes from the entry level, automatic, you know, just a simple execution uh, movements to the autologerie, the high end with tourbillons, minute repeaters, etc., etc. You need to explore. Uh, you need to explore our um, listing on the limited edition, or indeed on the RTR website as well. You'll find uh, you'll find everything, and you'll find how how wide the range uh, proposed is. Um, <laughs> thank you, Karazayev. Uh, glad that the answer was good. Yeah, and this creative piece. Um, um, this is uh, quite amazing. It's a first world guide as well. Uh, so it, this is a handmade butterfly dial by Dominique. But the, the incredible thing is really that uh, for the first time, the nano sapphire is bicolor. You can see this is only one sapphire and it's not glued. Huh? It's really one sapphire, which is two colors. In this case, green and pink. Uh, yeah. We have many different like, but it's quite, quite amazing. And it's a very first world guide. You have like this. Also, this is uh, like also a 39 millimeters just came out with a historical movement. I purchased historical movement, which we totally re-designed uh, and made uh, a skeleton out of it. Yeah. Very good. Very and, uh, good. Uh, you can see so many. Oh yeah, here you have this. I have a master engraver, so you can see the engraving is just out of this world. Huh? Uh, it's really, uh, I think I, I do it on the reverse side. Sorry for that. Very good. I know it was good. <clears throat> Thank you, Ivan. This is a great, uh, a great insight and insightful uh, view on, you. uh, on on your collection. And um, yeah, I, I have to thank you for your for your time. Thank you for those that have. Uh, thank you. Have My pleasure. Much indeed. Thank you for those that have watched this uh, live. Thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna have another Thanks one. Before, 
before Christmas. And also this live will remain available on our Instagram channel and hopefully also uh, through Artia. Uh, so if you have any, any questions, any comments, you can send to me, you can send to Ivan and uh, we'll be happy to, uh, to come back to you. Is it now over uh, until after Christmas? Uh, Ivan, would you take this time to find more inspiration? Uh, inspiration is not the issue, uh, but um, in fact, uh, yeah, we'll be uh, going on some holiday, but not much, yeah, with the family, find the family again. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, Ivan, I'm very grateful for your time and uh, congratulations on your, on your incredible Thank you work. to you, thank you for your time. Thank you everybody for following and uh, uh, feel welcome uh, at Pietro's places or uh, at our places with pleasure. Very good. And I will see you. We'll see you very soon. Thank you very much, Ivan. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.